Um, hi, everybody. Thank you for coming today. Um, Diane, what a great program and presentation. Um, I was thinking to myself as you were talking, isn't it amazing and ironic? There's no one more proactive than an exhausted new mother. Um, and I remember that stage. So what a great program. Thank you so much. Um, again, my name is Jennifer Sweeting, and I'm from Diabetes WA. I work in a primary health care role, and I'm here presenting on behalf of our evaluation team. Um, I used to sit in that team, but now I go out and I engage with um, primary health care professionals like yourselves, and um, I deliver the Desmond program both in um, Metro Perth and around the area and with Aboriginal people as well. So um, in saying that, I want to recognize that I am here on Ghana lands and recognize traditional landowners past, present, and future, and thank APNA for having me. It's been such a fun conference from... Jean Kitson talking about putting garlic in her vagina to seeing Richard Harris this morning um, to um, Nurse Robbie and everyone. It's just been fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I want to start this morning by asking how many of you sitting out here um, actually register people with diabetes with the NDSS when you see them? Maybe show of hands. Okay, um, great. Um, the other question I want to ask is how many of you actually talk to them about free programs and services that are available to them through the NDSS? Yay, great. Um, so I, you know, I want to reinforce as well throughout this presentation that the NDSS is about so much more than just product. Um, there are heaps of programs and services um, free to registrants, and Desmond is one of those programs. So today I'm going to talk about patient activation and improving that through um, outcomes of the Desmond program in regional WA. Um, the global burden of diabetes, um, if you've been attending any other presentations about diabetes um, during this conference, you know that diabetes is a massive issue. Globally, there are more than 415 million people living with diabetes and global expenditures are massive as well. Um, and that's only set to um, increase exponentially with increases in population, um, rises in obesity, sedentary lifestyles, and a number of other factors. Uh, the burden of diabetes in Australia um, is um, 1.7 million people are living with diabetes and about 2 million people have prediabetes. Um, every day there are 172 people diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And the estimates say that for every person who's diagnosed, there's probably someone out there living with diabetes who doesn't know it. Um, there's some other stats around hospitalizations, government expenditures, and mortality rates, but I'm sure that you all know the impact diabetes can have. What I want to talk about today is what we can do to hopefully prevent some of that through structured diabetes self-management education. So why um, do we talk about structured diabetes self-management education? Um, it's an integral part of diabetes care. Um, Recently, a paper by Davies uh, acknowledged that the American Diabetes Association and the European Association for the Study of Diabetes um, have supported the fact that everyone who's diagnosed with type 2 diabetes should be offered um, ongoing um, access to diabetes self-management education. Um, there are also national guidelines that reinforce that, um, whether it's the Australian National Diabetes Strategy, the RACGP guidelines, and I'm sure each of your states have guidelines around that. We've certainly got them in WA. Um, additionally, there are experts in the fields of diabetes and self-management who talk about some of the positive outcomes, including um, decreased short-term risks or risk of short-term effects and complications, decreased um, long-term diabetes relation, um, related complications over time, and of course, um, decreased costs on the health system. So Desmond, um, Desmond is the type, the nationally um, funded NDSS program for type two diabetes. Desmond stands for Diabetes Education and Self-Management for Ongoing and Newly Diagnosed. It's a bit of a mouthful, but when you walk around today uh, um, and throughout the conference, um, I've been talking to people about Desmond and everyone's saying, who's Desmond, who's Desmond? So um, that's what Desmond is. And um, just a quick overview of Desmond. Um, Desmond um, was originally developed by the Leicester Center in the UK and brought over by Diabetes WA in 2011. And it's now that national program for type two diabetes. 
Um, it's the gold standard of diabetes education. It is an evidence-based self-management program um, that meets all of the national standards around quality, research, translation, and a consistent dose. And what that dose of Desmond is, is it's a full day program, which is about six hours. Um, it's delivered by two um, Desmond accredited facilitators who've been through a quality development pathway um, to ensure the fidelity of that program and those person-centered behaviors. 10 people attend and they're allowed to bring a support person with them. And um, it's a structured curriculum with lots of hands-on activities around carbohydrates, fats, exercise, um, and it culminates with um, people as the, through the, as the day goes on, and I can share this with many of you, they fill out a health profile. And then at the end of the day, they, um, participants make an action plan. Um, and this is something I can share with you as well if you're interested. Um, Desmond is underpinned by um, a lot of um, theoretical perspectives, including social learning theory, Leventhal's common sense, and a person-centered philosophy of care. And when I talk about that, what I mean is that the person with diabetes is seen as the expert in the room. We're not going to tell anyone what to do or what they need to do to manage their diabetes. We're here to, um, you know, as we deliver Desmond, help them explore their beliefs around diabetes, how that impacts them, um, to self-reflect on that and make a goal that's right for them. Desmond Outcomes, there was an RCT behind the uh, program when it was developed in the UK, and there was a decrease in HbA1c, and while that wasn't significant, the control group was one-on-one -on -one education, and there were still incre or decreases in HbA1c, as well as decreases in smoking rates, uh, weight, blood pressure, um, depression scores, and an increase in physical activity, and those were all significant changes. In Australia, um, as we have been delivering Desmond and looking at the results, what we've seen by looking at diabetes beliefs is that there has been increased empowerment among people attending Desmond and a decrease in diabetes-related distress um, measured by the paid scale, if anyone's familiar with that. Um, what we want to do and what we've done in this study is explore um, whether Desmond could have an effect on the broader healthcare system. And what we've done is used the um, patient activation measure to do that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so patient activation measure, what is that? Um, patient activation is recognized as having the knowledge, skills, and confidence that equip patients to become actively engaged in their health care. Uh, the PAM score is categorized into four levels. So that first level means that people are quite passive, um, as you go up to level two, they're feeling a little bit more confident. Ne level three, they're taking a bit more action. And level four, they're really proactive and engaged in what they're doing around their health behaviors. Um, it's a scale of zero to 100. So increased activation um, is those higher you know, includes those higher levels. And increased activation in other studies is associated with a more effective use of healthcare resources. Um, and engaging again in more positive health behaviors. Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, our objective. So what we were looking at with this study is um, the effect of um, Desmond um, using the PAM score or PAM measure. So can Desmond increase patient activation? And if so, can that increase in pa patient activation be uh, maintained over time. Uh, what we did was we looked at 468 uh, Desmond participants across rural WA, and we looked at two samples um, and two um, streams of analyses. And so what we did was the first sample was pre-post, so before the program and after, immediately after attending, we had a sample of 388 participants. And then we also looked at before the program, directly after the program, and at three-month follow-up. And in terms of people who didn't answer everything or didn't complete an evaluation, obviously that number is a lot lower. Three-month follow-up is really tough if anyone else does evaluation. But um, we had a sample of 46 people. Uh, what did we find? So what we found was that patient activation significantly increased by 9.7 points from pre to post Desmond. Um, and again, that was significant. Um, 
and that improved activation from pre to post was for 68% of the participants. Um, and this is for any evaluators in the room. We used median scores here. So in the next slide, just in case you think, why is she talking means? Um, when we looked at the second sample of analyses from pre, post um, to the three month follow up, um, we again saw an, a significant increase of 10.3 points from pre to post. And then even though there was a decrease at um, three month follow up, people were still more activated than when they had but prior to attending the program. So they were, that was still a significant increase overall in terms of activation. Um, what we did find was that the people in that level four group were more activated. Um, so that's something we were following up on and we'd like to look into to a greater extent. So there was a statistical significance to our results, but what about a clinical significance um, on the ground? What does that mean on the effect in people's lives every day? Um, and clinical significance for PAM scores um, is defined as a, an increase of more than 5%. And um, pre to post Desmond, um, there was a clinical significance. And when we looked at the three month follow up, um, there was a percentage 61% um, pre to post and in that other sample, it was just a fluke that it was 61% for both groups um, that they were actually more activated. So that's a great sign that there was statistical significance and clinical significance. What does all this mean? Um, so we've showed again that there is statistical significance around patient activation, there's clinical significance, and what we know with patient activate, using the patient activation measure in other studies is that it can decrease the cost to the healthcare system. So people in level one um, from PAM um, are referred to as having an 8% higher health cost. So, um, what other studies have shown around hospitalizations and with diabetes, um, they've shown that um, if this can be translated into practice with the statistical significance of the change and increase in patient activation, Desmond could pen potentially have, um, could potentially reduce the risk of hospitalizations in diabetes by 16%. And that's huge. So what that is um, for anybody, again, statistically and evaluation driven is we've taken that change over time and multiplied it by 1.7. So that's a pretty big um, savings in terms of, of hospitalizations and costs. Again, what does this mean? So um, while we've talked about positive statistical significance and clinical evidence, um, how do we maintain that um, activation over time? Um, we've seen that it's on a... Um, downward trend. And so that's where all of you as nurses and people working in practices um, come into play. Um, there's a real role to work together in terms of sending someone to Desmond to get that foundation of education, but also on the ground seeing clients and people who have diabetes to reinforce that, to continue that um, decision making and um, support them as they continue on their journey and explore the role of Desmond and, and what they've done and you know see if they want to share their action plan with you. How do you access it? Desmond is delivered all across Australia. And again, I repeat, it is free to registrants with the NDSS. Um, it's an evidence-based program. It is the NDSS funded program across Australia. So make sure you're, insure, you're signing people up with the NDSS. Um, explore putting Desmond on your GP management plan templates and talk to people about it. You know, you're diagnosing someone, whether they've had diabetes for two days, two months, or 20 years, people still come to Desmond. There's a reason it's newly diagnosed and ongoing. Um, as someone who delivers it, people get something out of it no matter how long they've had diabetes and walk out feeling like they're in charge of what happens with their diabetes. And that's really important um, when you're making up to 300 decisions around, uh, you know, every day around you know, what, what's going on with your life. Um, visit desmondaustralia.com.au to request bookings for, or to make bookings for your patients or link with your local, state, or territory organization to ask where they're being delivered. And if they're not being delivered close to you, express interest and tell them you want it and they will find a way to make it happen. Um, we've delivered out in Aboriginal communities in Warburton and Wirakuna in the middle of WA on the NT border. So 
it can happen. You know, as long as you guys are asking for these programs and services, you know, these programs will be delivered. If you have any questions, um, talk to me after, talk to me at lunch. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions or, um, you know, call the NDSS helpline. And lastly, remember, it's not one of the five allied health visits. Um, this only complements that work. It makes what you do more person-centered. It makes your time more effective. You're not going to you know, be explaining what happens in the body with diabetes or what a carbohydrate is or any of that. This is the foundation of knowledge on which you as practice nurses are building on and supporting people with diabetes. <laughs>